Yes, it is now recording, just so that um, we can have that um, information for folks to share that maybe couldn't quite get up this morning, um, and I don't blame them whatsoever, um, but uh, wanted to be able to just let folks know that. So you can feel free to jump on camera if you like. If you don't want to jump on camera, you do not have to. There is no pressure. Um, just wanted to uh, mention a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, we uh, as legislators do not do this work alone. And I wanted to make sure to do a shout out for uh, a HD30 team, which is Nicole Vargas. And I'm doing this like, here she is on my screen. <laughs> and then Mark Watson, as well as um, Jenna, Devin, is Jenna on? Jenna is a PSU intern with, um, with our, our office. Um, we also have uh, three high school interns. I see Lily Donis is on. Lily is at Liberty High School. We have a Glencoe High School. A Sean, is a Sean? Okay, um, don't see a Sean. And then we have Olivia Vargas is a high school intern as well. So um, we're very excited to have them who are incredibly passionate about um, you know, some of the causes that we take up and they get involved. So um, I'm, I'm excited to have a solid HD30 team serving the district well. Um, also wanted to just do a shout out for electeds that are in the virtual room this morning. Um, please introduce yourself in case I don't see, is this all one screen? Yep, we're on one screen so far. Okay, so I do see Mayor Steve Calloway. Yes, and I do see uh, Hillsborough City Councilor Anthony Martin. He keeps jumping from one corner to the next. <laughs> and then do I have any other electeds? Okay, fabulous. Um, thank you so much for joining today. I think uh, Anthony and the mayor, I think we have been in a couple Zoom rooms uh, this week um, for League of League of Cities and here, that might've been the only ones. So, um, so thank you for joining. Uh, we'll also say that um, I wanna point out that uh, January is School Board Appreciation Month and wanted to point out, of course, that our own Mark Watson is a Hillsborough School Board member. And um, yeah, and uh, just the amazing amount of time, volunteer time that uh, these school board members give to, um, to the safety and, and well being and education of our students, um, to support our staff members in this endeavor. And um, you know, just support support the work that we're that we um, that we ask of them to do for our Hillsboro students. So, um, thank you to Mark. Um, I do represent a small corner of um, banks, and so I um, wanted to shout out in case there's any banks uh, school board members on here as well. Um, but that is a um, again a volunteer position. So give them a shout out, send them a word of thanks, um, and especially in a pandemic. Uh, during a pandemic, holy moly. So I wanted to, to share that. And um, really quite excited to see so many um, familiar faces and wanted to just, um, y'all know me that I could sit and, and talk for an hour and go on about this and that and the other. But um, I do wanna treat this virtual room just as we do in um, at the library. Right. Um, for those of you who remember those times that we would spend around the table, um, whether at Insomnia or whether at Ava's or at the library, I want to make sure that this is a, a two way street, a two way dialogue. And so please um, feel free to um, drop something in the chat. I should open that. Um, and, you know, feel free to drop anything in the chat or if you have a question, uh, certainly um, you can go down to um, participants too and raising your hand or just flag me and I can, you know, any of us can try to watch that. Um, really just wanted to try to, to make this a, a two-way street, two-way dialogue. So um, we have, um, it is strange times. Uh, normally, uh, we would be in the Capitol um, at least Monday through Thursday and having in-district uh, meetings and such on Fridays. 
Um, we are currently only going down to the Capitol on Tuesdays right now. And so we go down to go down on Tuesdays. We have floor. Um, we um, uh, have first reads of bills and do very limited, um, you know, hello in the hallway type of things. Um, there are no meetings. There are no committee meetings in person. Um, we are extremely careful. Um, I think that people are are, are really aware that um, there are folks that are very concerned about being in the building at this time. And so we're trying to do our best uh, to limit that capital time for us because when we have to be down in the capital, that also makes that all our staff members, the the um, capital staff, the the fiscal, the legislative fiscal office, and maybe legislative council, all those folks have to come together and come in the in the office as well. So we're trying to be respectful of keeping those um, limits in the capital. Um, we do a lot of uh, during the week. Um, I spend a lot of time in this. Um, I am very fortunate to have be empty nesters, my husband and I. So uh, this used to be one of our kids' rooms, and um, I have taken that on as my office. And so, um, you know, I spend a lot of time on uh, in the me uh, Microsoft Teams and and meeting with folks. But that's not to say that it's not just lobbyists and advocates. I do want to make sure that folks know that I am open. I am open for business. So if you have uh, want to make sure you want to get a meeting to talk, um, please, uh, you know, reach out to the office and happy to do so can be a phone call, um, can be a, a, a Microsoft Teams or a Zoom. I do prefer a little bit of face to face. It's kind of nice to see each other. Um, and so please feel free to know that that that's, you know, I'm available for that. And we are going to be experienced. We're going to be taking on and, and uh, some new ideas of maybe doing some office hours where we may have some scheduled time that people will put out there and then people can just drop in, say hello, say what they need to say, ask their question and leave if they want to. Um, but I'm going to try to block some time to where I am available in a in a Zoom room or in a in a some sort of virtual room for people uh, to jump in. Always good to see Junebug. Um, so um, I just wanted to, um, uh, yeah, really open it up. Um, we've had some exciting developments as far as getting to get into the into the committee hearings. So just to kind of recap for folks, um, I am on the behavioral health committee. I'm on the education committee. I serve on the full ways and means. I serve as the co-chair of public safety ways and means. Um, I serve on um, as an alternate for uh, the conduct committee, which I'll come back and talk a little bit about that because um, many of you have emailed on some issues. And um, I also serve as a commissioner on the Alcohol Drug Policy Commission. And so um, I, um, you know, wanted to, uh, so we've been meeting my, one of my bills uh, actually did get uh, heard last week uh, or this week, well, this last week, the um, it's House Bill 2313, which was in behavioral health. And this was a bill that um, really would address the gaps in services for, um, for substance use disorder. It's really what I feel is something that is um, really a critical piece to doing the work on Measure 110. Um, I feel that without knowing where we're at for service and where the gaps are across the state, it's really putting the cart before the horse to address measure 110 before we really understand what we have in service out there. So I'm really pleased to be working with Representative Sanchez on this. Um, Representative Morgan is a new member. Um, she is um, from Southern Oregon. This is a, a, a bipartisan Bill, um, I have a new member, uh, Boomer Wright from uh, Coos Bay area that has joined on to this bill as well. And so um, this is, um, you know, I'm excited to have actually a few of my bills that are bipartisan and even bicameral. So that bill um, will have a work session. So as some of you might not know, the public hearing is when you can submit written testimony or ask to testify um, and the, the committee hears, um, hears about the bill and answers any questions. Then the work session is, when the work session is scheduled, then that is when we have the, um, the vote. 
So the vote will come to be. And this bill has a small fiscal. So I think it is like two, just over $200,000. Uh, so that will go to Ways and Means and then um, probably go to one of the, to, to the subsequent uh, um, committee that it will go to for Ways and Means to, um, to go out for, um, uh, hopefully make it to the floor. So um, I'm excited that that bill is coming through and I have some really small, I call them just their simple bills, simple fixes. Um, one of them, I will say that I'm really looking forward to getting community support on. And that is one that is just an absolute nuisance and, and, and bother and it is loud mufflers. Um, how many of you raise of hands, hear them street racing, going down the roads um, and whatnot. Um, and uh, in the early morning hours, or even sometimes quite frequently during the middle of the day while you're Zooming. Um, so this bill will actually allow, um, actually worked with a, a police lieutenant, <clears throat> excuse me, who's actually a constituent, Jincy Pace from the Hillsborough Police Department, who helped us work on language because this bill, um, it, you know, police officers have the ability to kind of um, in, um, enforce it if they have a special tool right now. And so that is, it's like a sound, uh, to, you know, to check the sound decibels of the loud. That is impossible for all of these folks to carry um, our officers. So the way that this is written now will help officers be able to enforce it uh, more easily. And um, I'm excited that there are some folks in the community that have asked, how can we get involved? What do we need to do? And I would say just making sure that you're letting, um, if you're House District 30 um, constituent, hey, it's, I'm in, I'm, this, this is one of a priority for me, but please reach out to your Senator, uh, Senator Riley, and let him know about it. Um, if you know other legislators to let them know about it, um, that this is something that would address a nuisance issue within our community. So um, I just feel like I have just, talked a lot. So I really want to um, open it up as I take a sip of my tea to see if there's a question out there from folks. And then we have had some pre-submitted questions as well. So we'll, um, we'll go ahead and, and answer some of those as well too. So I'm not sure if someone wants to say hello and say why they're here, just as we do it with, around that table, um, you know, yeah. Hello. Uh, I was curious if you could talk about two things. One would be um, raising liquor taxes. So I know there's been a little conversation about that, but the governor included it in her budget, I think, but then it didn't get, didn't move through immediately or something. And then also about reforming property taxes. I know there are a couple of joint resolutions and some bills about property taxes. Could you speak on both those? Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I, um, I can speak on the one on the, um, and I think we can try, like we have the magic wizards of um, Mark and Nicole that are, can, can try to locate um, uh, some of these bills if we can in Olis to be able to provide some information. Um, and so um, I, uh, uh, I know that uh, this particular bill would raise the alcohol, the beer and wine tax and be specifically um, earmarked to help with addiction with the substance use disorder and um, issues that um, arise from that. Because frankly, that was one of the issues that folks found with measure 110 um, that was uh, bothersome. And that I, I, um, I had quite a list myself, um, but one of them was that it didn't actually encourage or have any new revenue attached to it that, to help address the issues of measure 110. So this beer and wine tax is something that is being looked at um, as a, you know, as an, an, as an addition, as a support to Measure 110 to help in that work. Um, I am not certain where, um, uh, I believe, is, is that specifically Tana Sanchez's bill? I, I cannot remember if that is so, um, but we can actually get more information on that as well uh, to see where that is. And the property tax, there's, there's a few folks that are working on some property tax uh, measures. Um, and again, we'll have, to, um, we'll, we'll have to follow up with you on that as well um, because they haven't been, um, I haven't heard any discussion on those just quite yet to see exactly what those proposals are. But I do know that a lot of the discussion and things that people have been talking about that I have heard on the snippets of conversation is around measure, uh, the measures that have 
come back from us from the 90s that have really put limitations. Um, yeah, 50. And um, yeah, they really put our limitations on um, on uh, property taxes. So I know that those are um, folks that are concerned about that. Um, let's see, I wanted to see if um, there's any in chat. I'm going to take the participants off because I can't see the chat as much. Um, Uh, let's see, is there any effort to limit open carry of firearms as a particular political demonstration? Um, there is there is a few, um, and if anyone wants to speak out to that, um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, so they would rather just put the question in, in chat. Uh, they totally can, but I'll just give it a minute. Um, so basically, I see, I don't know. If, okay, so there, there, there's some question about, um, about open carry laws and things um, that folks are concerned about. Um, and I know that there are a few um, bills out there that are addressing some of the preemption type of bills. I think that um, Representative Brian Clem has something about public space and um, being able to have local control over that so that local uh, city ordinances can have, um, can, can look at those um, uh, and make rulings themselves for specific areas. He knows that one of his, he notes that one of his um, parks in his district um, was a area that was uh, having political gatherings and there was a lot of open carry. So that was a concern that he heard from his city legislators. I think that Senator Burdick has a larger bill uh, regarding um, uh, political, pol uh, sorry, um, uh, public buildings and open carry. So um, I just wanted to, to share that as well. Um, and feel free, anybody. I feel like I'm just like, everybody's muted. So I feel like I'm just, <laughs> oh, do I hear? Janine, uh, yeah. yeah, this is Mike Gallagher. That was my, my question. And, you know, it seems to me that the way people have been using and abusing open carry of firearms as part of a political demonstration really comes very close to brandishing a weapon, which in most uh, jurisdictions is, is illegal. I mean, there is just no justification to show up to make a political point in carrying a, carrying a rifle. It's just pure intimidation. And uh, I, would, I would like to see Oregon take a, a hard look at that and say, if you're not hunting or uh, traversing an area for a legitimate purpose with your, with your, uh, with your firearm, then, uh, you know, leave it at home. It doesn't, it doesn't have any place. And, you know, what happened at the Capitol a couple of weeks ago is, uh, and we've seen examples here, and it, it just seems like that is a common sense thing that we ought to really uh, crack down on and say, hey, come on out, make your, make your point, but make it verbally, make it with a sign, but not, not with a gun. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I appreciate those comments. It, it was quite alarming um, at, in the um, to be in the Capitol and experience that. I remember taking one picture down from the second floor um, very quickly, and then I was urged to step or actually away from the window. Um, which, you know, just absolutely alarming in your state capitol. Um, but the one picture that I took um, of the, the crowd, three people had um, like a, some sort of automatic like um, AR-15 looking type of, um, of gun um, that was that they had that they were carrying. And um, it was you saw the anger, you saw what we experienced um, with people kind of trying to enter into the Capitol. Um, and uh, I wanted, I know that was a question that came in prior to this, uh, to the listening session. And I wanted to say that, that our, our presiding <coughs> officer, the Senate president um, and uh, the speaker of the house, they are addressing and looking to see what they can do to address some of those concerns. Um, I know that um, a lot of folks had written into me specifically um, regarding the um, Rep Nearman issue um, that folks have seen on TV. Um, I have um, just actually had um, been sending um, folks the thank you for, um, for providing that information, holding that information, but as an alternate um, to the conduct committee, which may see, see something come to there, I am, am not putting out any public opinion on that. Um, just as um, I am not putting 
um, my the opinion out there on um, Representative Hernandez as well that folks have had uh, sent me emails on as well because I just don't know as an alternate if I might be called to that committee to um, have conversation and and have some sort of decision making. So um, it's important for people to continue when they hear things and be are concerned about the issues please continue to send those in because I do track them. Um, we have a you know, great team, like I said, that tracks how many of these emails come in um, and be able, that is a really important key for legislators is to really hear the stories and to know how many of the type of issues that really concern people. So I wanted to, to touch on that. And I want folks to know that another question that came through earlier was um, people were saying they were really concerned about um, our safety in the building and what was being taken care of. And, um, and so I, I do very much appreciate that. Um, I um, This is a, um, just a, an incredible year that I, I, a little bit alarming when, when folks have to tell you um, of things that you need to be watching for in your own home um, and in your own surroundings and um, alert people um, of that, that when they see something to say something. And um, I just uh, really wanted to say that um, we are looking at all measures and I am, I am incredibly proud of our Oregon State Police for the efforts that they made to protect us in that capital and the issues that they've done every week for us to make sure that safety is uh, and our well-being is a top priority for them. So um, I think there's some hands up. Um, I think Amber. Uh, yeah, I had a, a question about um, access to mental health services because it is such a problem. Um, all, most all of it is done telehealth and uh, not everybody has access to insurance or a computer. And as we're coming out of this pandemic with the vaccines, you know, our, our teenagers are five times more likely to be uh, carrying this trauma for the rest of their lives. And, you know, what are we gonna be doing to address this, the next pandemic, which is this mental health outbreak? Yeah, Amber, thank you. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely, I'd say that it's been an honor to be added to the Behavioral Health uh, Committee. Um, I had, had have of, often, um, uh, vocalize though that we have a behavioral health committee and we have a health care committee and I asked them to rename the health care committee physical health because I think they're all components of health care and I think the more that we continue to keep that narrative going the more in people's mind that it just doesn't um, it, it doesn't commute com compute with people to go you know what mental health is health care and um, I think we heard it as legislators, uh, school board members and everything. When we took the, the message across the state working on the Student Success Act, mental health, no matter what corner of the state, no matter where you were, Burns, Beaverton, mental health was number one, absolutely number one. So um, we, we are now, that was pre-COVID, right? Now we have a situation where our, you're exactly as you tagged is that our schools for our students are that safe haven, a place to see eyes around that student to be able to see, you know what, something's going on with Sally today. I need to kind of figure out and check in with Sally and see how Sally can get supports. And so, our, you know, that is a missing link. Um, also a missing link is just our, so our social norms have changed so much, right? Um, we, we're not, this isn't normal for us as even in this, even in this capacity, we were a been, we've been around a table. This is my 72nd community conversation. And I valued those conversations around the table to be able to see people and, 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 and hear them. And yes, hug people when they need to be hugged and, and talk with people. So we do, um, that does absolutely need our, our behavioral health, our mental health has such a critical need for funding, for support, 
for also because that that component of that is the substance use disorder, right? We have folks that are turning and self-medicating. So again, we need to be able to figure out how we're addressing that and how we are, um, you know, addressing those issues for community members to get them the support they need. So um, I, I hear you. I know that our Washington County folks um, have heard from your local legislators on what it is. I think that Washington County is even doing some revamp and work to their, their website because personally, it's a little bit of a nightmare uh, to try to, to navigate around their website. Um, they have really great staff and they have good information, but they need to make that easy for folks to be able to get to. And so, um, and also great, um, great point, Mark, um, pointing up that the Washington uh, in, in House District 30, the Hawthorne Walk-In Clinic, we are very fortunate in, to have that facility within our district because within Washington County, actually, because our local law enforcement, our folks that um, encounter folks that are experiencing uh, a mental health issue can no longer have to just say that's the resources to take someone into jail or take someone into custody. It's taking someone to the source where they can get help for the healthcare issue that they're facing. And so we are very fortunate to have um, Hawthorne Clinic. Um, yes, it is amazing. So um, thank you for bringing that up, Amber. Appreciate that. Um, Hillary? Morning. I just wanted to touch back on Ginny Burdick's uh, Senate Bill 554. Um, it is such an important bill this year because of the alarming increase in armed intimidation. So we, as part of Moms Demand Action, we're just trying to get the word out that armed intimidation is gun violence and that our democracy does not work at gunpoint. So if you're you know, in the legislature, if you're a mayor, a school board member, city councilor, if you've got somebody holding a gun, you know, even if they pretend or say that they are there to you know, be peaceful, the mere presence of a gun will impact your decision-making. So I just wanted to um, touch on that and also ask if there's any um, updates on the secure storage bill, HB 2515. Thank you. Thank you, because I really, um, I, I meant to touch on that even after Amber, so it's a perfect little intersection to be able to talk about 2510. Um, it's the safe storage bill. Um, I am, um, this is a bill that's been worked on for over 10 years, even actually beyond that from what we're, when Nicole, I think was digging into some information, it was like um, people that have been involved in the legislature before they're like, oh my gosh, I've been working on that for forever. Um, but it, this is such a, um, an issue that um, is being brought forward. And I'm so proud to say that it's not a judiciary committee that it's going to, it's a, it's the healthcare committee, the physical healthcare committee that we will see it and hear it in because, um, because gun violence is, is a crisis. It's a healthcare crisis. It's a public healthcare crisis. And so we are understanding and, and so proud that, that, that is the direction that this can, because that's, that was our, our, our verbiage, that's our words that we were saying when we, when we talked about it in committee, in judiciary committee in the 2020 session. We kept talking about how this public health crisis, and I certainly don't want to call anyone out that doesn't want to speak, but I'm just really proud that we had a personal, real personal heartfelt story shared in that committee um, from a father who was heart, it was heartbreaking to hear. And um, he is a House District 30 constituent. And um, I know that I just want him to know and everyone to know, I am absolutely committed to making sure that this bill passes. When people have asked me about priorities, this is absolutely something that I am committed to making sure that we see across the finish line. And I'm really proud to say that the work as frustrating as 2020 was due to the unfortunate, very quick um, ending of that session, um, that um, we did a lot of work within that session, painful, exhaustive work with other legislators to get them on board to be able to say, public health crisis, what is it that you need? How can we address some of your concerns? And we got some of those concerns addressed. Even some of our Republican counterparts that said, hey, you don't have this in the bill. Um, can you put that? Sure, we will. Oh, but sorry, we still can't vote for it because it's a gun bill. 
So um, that is that is frustrating, um, but I do feel that we have good good um, good work forward going on this. Good momentum. I also believe that um, there has been some amendments that have been suggested. Some that I actually find um, pretty interesting. I, I I am very intrigued by the serial. Uh, number registration idea. And I have actually been talking to some of the advocates about that, talking about um, uh, the idea that came from a constituent uh, a conversation just the other day. And um, that it's and that it's not just about registering. It's not giving law enforcement your every, this is every gun that I have, but it's as a responsible gun owner that you would write that serial number down, keep it in a safe location and then if your gun is stolen, provide that information to the police officers, to law enforcement, which can better track where that, you know, what, what has happened to that gun, where it has been. And also, um, you know, to the constituent, his gun was actually returned to him after it had been stolen several years ago, was actually returned to him. Re one of them was returned to him recently because of that serial gun, serial number um, written on there. So I do think that is uh, an interesting concept to, a, to an amendment. So having some conversations on that. So um, let's see, there's lots in the, lots in the chat. Um, thank you, Jeff, for your support. We absolutely will want your support. Um, and um, then I think that um, I think that we've had some questions about vaccinations. I mean, show of hands. I know how many folks are very concerned about vaccinations. Um, I have an 87 year old mom who I've been checking the website on Washington County to see when that opportunity is there to sign her up. Um, I personally um, will not be signing her up for the for the convention center location um, because that is a parking and then they have to walk in. And I think, so I'm gonna be going to the airport location, I think, uh, driving her for the first time. We haven't been in the same vehicle. So um, when that becomes available for 80 and above, um, which I think is after February 7th or 8th, um, I just keep checking the site. Um, I will be taking her to the airport because it's a drive up Put the, put the sleeve, get your vaccination, and away you go after a 15-minute observation. Um, so um, I do think, um, oh boy, there's lots of information in, um, in the uh, chat, and I'm trying to follow. I'm so sorry. So um, just to say that I know that the tri-county areas, Washington, Multnomah, Clackamas, um, oh, actually, and Columbia County have all banded together and have joined with the metro regions, the large hospitals, and um, have, I think Kaiser can even provide uh, folks to go on. And, and I don't even think you have to be a Kaiser um, uh, Kaiser patient for that. I would have to check that out. But, um, but they have banded together to make sure that they're increasing access for folks. They're looking at addressing those folks in the 1A priority group. There were folks that were very concerned that schools were, that educators were being um, raised up on the, the, the wait list um, before our seniors. There's just been a lot of conversation. The governor was very committed to working with educators, hearing the concern that without educators and, and support staff, teachers classified, without having them have the vaccination that they needed to, um, they needed to be able to, to get them vaccinated as soon as possible and, um, and, and get them up on the list. And, and I think there's even been some diagrams and some conversation about how many educators there were compared to how many folks over 65 in Oregon. <coughs> and I think what it just absolutely boils down to that the governor keeps repeating is the scarcity that the low number of, of vaccinations that we have that as they're coming in, we need to have that planned effort to say, who can we best, who's the, who are the folks that we can best get this to right away? Um, and I think the educators were that pot of, of, of being able to get them vaccinated so that we can get on our plan to start doing some hybrid models, getting kids back to school. I was speaking to the bank's uh, superintendent the other day, and he was talking to me about um, how, how their staff is, a um, good portion of their staff is, is vaccinated, has their first shot. And so they're looking forward to their second. They have been doing some very small uh, cohorts of, of students that need extra support. My understanding that Hillsborough School District does as well. 
Um, the Hillsborough School District website is a great um, form of, of, of uh, place for information for you to go to, to follow you know, the plan of the Hillsborough School District and, and what they're doing for, for students um, uh, for their plan to return. And so um, just wanted to, um, to share that, that as a superintendent speaking to Superintendent Leo, that was been an ultimate top tier concern for him was about vaccinations and making sure his staff so um, we're hopeful that as we hear of other vaccinations that are coming on board, following the science of that and understanding that that is how that process is made to be, because I think that component to people, they have to have information. In today's society, people are getting a lot of vaccination information on the internet. We have to really trust our science uh, areas of information, our Oregon Health Authority, our um, CDC for showing us the, the importance of this and the efficacy of these um, vaccinations and um, really working um, and understanding that and providing that information to people um, from those trusted resources, I think are, are incredibly important. And I, I had a conversation with the governor's office last week about that saying, I know that is a component I think that even this morning when I was watching the news, as, as some of you may have heard about the Josephine County, the people that were on the snow, you know, in the road and they gave vaccinations, that they even have an area that is very vaccine hesitant. And they even had a couple of people that refused to get it, even there on the snowy road. But others were like, one guy was so enthusiastic, he ripped off his shirt and he was like, give it, <laughs> you know, because he wasn't um, on that list for a while. So um, we need to believe science. Um, let's say that. So, oh my goodness, can I scroll down a bit? Um, how about a West Side vaccination location? I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I thought that the, um, and, and Mayor Calloway would probably say he's been also, uh, you know, um, probably on the phone and on the talking with folks about this issue too, because I'm sure he has heard this as well um, as saying that I know that our, I've been promoting our stadium as an absolute beautiful location, perfect in, perfect out, drive through location. And man, just to see that hops field makes our heart feel good too. So I see that Mayor Calloway has gone off mute. I didn't mean to put you on, on the spot, but. Well, no, that's okay. Uh, thank you. Um, and, and you're absolutely right, Representative. All of our Washington County mayors are really frustrated by the fact that the closest place is the convention center or the airport. And, um, you know, and I will say, you know, speaking personally, you know, as the Hillsborough mayor, recognizing that 97123, that zip code pops up as one of the top 10 every single week, you know, when it's predictable and we see a pattern, then we know where we need to go. And, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I'm frustrated that, I feel like we are creating another racist, um, you know, structure because those, you know, people of color who we marched for to say we recognize these, you know, the, these racist structures and, and our institutional racism. I feel like we are right now creating another system that, it, that, that reflects that racism because those people of color where it's heaviest in, their con in the concentration of COVID are not getting are not getting served and um, and uh, so I'll just kind of get off my soapbox there. But I, I just do want to reaffirm that um, you know we've talked to the to the county uh, to the point of their frustration. We've reached out to the governor's office as well. Um, you know when we see you know how things are set up in other counties around the state, um, it's frustrating that we don't see something similar here um, for any number of reasons. But thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I really appreciate, um, as I know, your your um, your efforts to elevate um, for Hillsborough and Western Washington County. Um, I, I I I will say the small sliver of having um, of positive about having it one site be at the convention center is the Max Line, right? If people have no way have access, right? if that is the location. So having something close to the max line, if that is their only means of transportation is a plus. But um, I just believe that so many folks, just as you have described, 
is being able to come to an area where you see the issue, where you see the numbers and being able to address it. Um, I, I know that I was hearing from folks that lived in the district about, you know, from Virginia Garcia, when will we see it? When, we're, when, when can we get our vaccinations? So we were doing all that we could to connect them, to get them signed up where they could go for their 1A uh, vaccinations. And they proudly sent me pictures when that day happened on a Friday. They were like, you know, and doing this and, and everything else. So um, we absolutely just... It, I just, the convention center is, is ultimately just the, like I said, my mom is 87. The one place that she drives to is her insomnia coffee shop and the bank all within a two, three block <laughs> um, perimeter of her place. So um, I haven't been in her, uh, I haven't, we haven't hung out together. I haven't been in a car with her, but that's something that um, we'll have to figure out in double masking and putting her in the back seat and, windows down and somehow driving because we got to get her there. Um, and I'm, uh, I, I'm committed to doing so, but I continue to elevate the need for something in Western Washington County on this end. Stadium is just a no brainer. So um, feel free to speak up if I don't, cause there's lots in the chat and I'm so sorry, cause I want to be really respectful of folks time. Um, I do want to touch on, um, touch on something that I think, cause it was on my notes to talk about. And I see that Mark had put it in as well, that um, how many of you just by show of hands are familiar with OLIS, the Oregon Legislative Information System? Okay, so a good portion of you, if you happen, I'll just the short, short and quick, if you happen to hear a bill, if, if safe storage is something that you're like, I need to follow this bill, I need to hear when it's gonna have a hearing that you go into o OLIS and you can, and Mark has, has described here what you can do to, um, to e-subscribe to that bill in the chat and be able to go in there and, and say, I want to know when, when this bill is having action and you put your email in and anytime it is, it is put towards a committee, whether that is a public hearing or a work session, you're going to get an email alert saying, hey, you need to, something's coming, an action is coming because the public testimony window for um, submitting a letter for giving testimony is a 24 hour window. Um, and that's normal, that's what it's always been. And then there isn't public testimony for a work session, but that doesn't mean that your voice is not important. What you can do is take your letter and email it to every single person on that committee and say, this is important to me. I didn't get a chance to, to let you hear it in, in official testimony, but this is what I need you to hear. So um, I want folks to, to know that um, please contact us if you have any questions on how to do that. But um, in this virtual world, I, I do still do believe it is frustrating, right? People aren't being able to be there in committee. I wanna just talk about the silver lining again, because we have to find those silver linings, right? The silver lining is that if you live in Pendleton and you want to testify on that safe storage bill, you now can get in there and testify or provide your letter, but you can get in there and you can testify and give your two, three minutes of, of testimony. Um, you didn't have to drive to the Capitol. You didn't have to drive hours to the Capitol. You didn't have to get in your gas guzzling truck or diesel truck and drive there to the Capitol to give your testimony. Your Capitol is open there for you to do this virtually. And so I do believe that there is a way that we can expand our access. I've actually been asking for this since the beginning of being a, a legislator is, is um, not understanding how people couldn't do some sort of uh, virtual testimony or call in testimony on a regular basis because the, the, it's bad, you know, the environmental impacts you have to miss work. You may have to get daycare. All of those things can impact your ability to be part of the demo, you know, the democratic uh, process here. So um, I do think that um, that's a, an interesting opportunity for folks to be able to to jump on um, virtually. Um, so folks have asked about climate legislation. Um, 
just touching on that as, as far as just even that testimony part is that um, we all know that I think basically that, that, that 40% of the impacts that we um, uh, from our, our climate come from transportation. So, so figuring out ways that we can, uh, w- there's a very big push from the governor and from many legislators on electrification, um, looking at not only our, our state vehicles and more access to um, state um uh, access for, um, uh, you know, uh, a infrastructure of charging so that f- people can go further distances and charge and be able to get that. Um, I happen to have an electric vehicle. I love my, my Chevy Bolt and it gets me back and forth to Salem a couple times before I have to charge. Um, and I think that, um, so there's exciting development with not only uh, electrification and infrastructure support there, there's also making sure that um, on our supporting that and also helping uh, uh, effects of, of wildfire is working with our line clearance folks and making sure that they have the support to go up and clear a lot of these lines. Because as we learn, many of the, the wildfire issues that happened or some of the issues that happened in California were direct impacts from vegetation around um, uh, power lines and such. Um, and I think that um, it's also just in, in, you know, there's there's folks that are talking, um, Representative Con Pham, exciting new uh, legislator uh, coming on. She has um, really, great, she's been taking her 100% clean energy um, work that she's done in her own personal work prior to being a legislator across the state to talk about those that message. And she's coming back to take those voices into the Capitol to work on uh, 100% clean uh, legislation. Um, and, and we still have, we had quite a shakeup on our E&E uh, committee. Um, there's a lot of different new members, but I can tell you that Representative Pam Marsh has a, a keen eye focus on making sure that climate change continues to be at the top of a, a priority. Um, we have um, our Democratic um, Caucus has priorities that we put out, and and she has been a strong voice on climate change. She's been a strong voice on broadband access uh, as well across this state. Um, so um, that continues to be a focus for our um, for our our committees and for um, for our um, the work that we need to do. I think there's exciting new developments of some folks coming into that conversation that may not have been at the table before. So um, um, I just want to feel free a um, oh, wingspan a venue for that. Yep, that's an interesting idea for a vaccination. Um, I know that um, so someone had mentioned um, that um, talked about the Washington County Fairgrounds as a um, houseless area and the COVID-19 hotel facility. Um, I, I apologize. I didn't check. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm the one that asked that. So thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, um, you know, I apologize. I don't have information about uh, the hotel specifically that I know. And if anyone else does, please feel free to chime in and, and, and answer that. But I can tell you Hillsborough, the city of Hillsborough has um, had an exciting new uh, development with their space that used to be the Washington County Museum in the Civic Center that is opening up for a 30 bed um, houseless center um, for our fo- for folks um, experiencing that. And so kudos to Hillsborough leadership for that. Um, I, I don't I don't like to put anybody on the spot, but I just want to open it up. Remember, if anybody wants to speak on that, um, feel free to do so. I was just wondering if you um, had any updates as to what is the, what are we doing going forward? Or maybe the mayor can chime in. I mean, I'm in this area and we've experienced, I see like I have a few neighbors that are kind of close by Washington County. I mean, I know it's just what's happening. <laughs> and I've seen an increase in traffic and maybe like little stuff, but it just seems like it's in when you discussed mental health, I think that's may or may not be part of it. How are we tracking that and what's happening there? Does that have anything to do with perhaps COVID in the area or, you know, when you get people to get just, it's hard to find information on that other than we know it exists, but yeah, I have some oh, points to that, please. 
Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Callaway too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for reading that for me. I have some points, but I do see that uh, Mayor Callaway has unmuted himself to maybe share some thoughts. You know, Representative, I would rather. Oh. I would rather hear you talk than me talk. Uh, um, you know, if there's, um, you know, because I recognize we're getting close to 10:30, so I'm going to defer to you. Okay. You know, but um, you know, I would be glad to. Uh, you know, to, to add, you know, kind of, you know, maybe fill in a few gaps on what Hillsborough is doing, um, you know, after you speak. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I know that, that the moratorium issues that we um, put in place um, were a direct result from making sure that people could remain in their homes as long as possible. Um, so through this pandemic, um, we've done things to help with not only uh, landlord support, um, I mean, with, with tenant support, but also landlord support for folks that maybe have gone several months without receiving rent. We realize that some of those folks are our main street um, landlords, folks that are in the area. So they, that, that is their income. So we gave them support in that way. I think that um, our community partners, our Washington County has understood what the issue is in, in, in understanding with the pandemic and the health concerns of, of congregated, congregated um, folks, you know, together and the risks that folks have for COVID-19. This summer, they created the safe, um, safe village uh, sleep, safe sleep village at the fairgrounds had tents. Um, had I, I visited the the the, um, the um, facility, the area had food, had resources to connect people to help, uh, to mental health support, to job support, to clothing, to community action. Our community action partner has been incredible in trying to help these issues, um, and I think that um, I think that. Um, we are, even though we have the moratorium put in place, it's, it's still, people are, are still losing their homes. People are still, um, I think that we're seeing more people in a, a houseless um, uh, situation. And I, it was very concerning for our students in schools. We saw it at Beaverton School District had the highest rate, but now we're concerned about what that's going to look like, what we don't know, because we're not all, you know, our schools don't exactly know where some of their students are are physically at to get the services they need. So I think it's a multi-prone approach. I think that it's local, it's our city, it's our county addressing these issues. And I have to say that on Nextdoor, an app, I was following some stuff, some conversation about people concerned because they saw somebody, you know, sleeping in a park. And I was, um, I was disheartened by some of the conversation because, but I was really lifted by some of the folks saying, instead of pointing as to how that person gets dragged out of that area, why don't we figure out who to find in the, in the community to help point that person to, to maybe some supports they need. And someone had mentioned the Hillsboro uh, 30 bed uh, situation. Um, and I think that um, people are facing, just as Amber pointed out with mental health, people are facing the substance use disorder, they're facing the pandemic and jobs and unemployment issues. I'm disheartened by the fact that I'm, I'm happy that our office has been able to help people through the unemployment situation with connecting them to services, but I'm really just dis, disheartened to know the numbers because I know there's far more people out there in the district that have no idea that their, their legislative office can help them through this process. And so I think it's just, there's so many things, so many factors that are taking place and we're trying to address that through all the 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 um, through all our agencies, I saw you unmuted, Jennifer. Did you have? Well, do you, like I haven't I haven't been to the Washington County Fairgrounds, but can do you have an idea, or maybe the mayor? Is it at full capacity? Do we know the demographic? Who is there? Is that families? Did we move people from downtown? I mean, I saw something in the New York Times that people were maybe moved in from other states. But I mean, I don't know. I was just wanting a fill in as to yeah it was the, who's there and and is there a mental health aspect that's 
who's handling that or what? Yeah, I mean, that's what I think was really, I think that was really beautiful about the safe sleep village that was at the fairgrounds is that they connected people to multiple services, right? So they tried to help them if they had a mental health uh, concern or issue, they tried to figure out how they could connect them to services within the county. Um, they made sure that it was safe location. They had people that so were working. still going on there? Washington County Pro Project Homeless Connect. I'm not certain that the fairgrounds, I think that that funding was ending. So that's why I think uh, partners such as the city of Hillsborough has stepped up to address the, the 30 bed location. Um, I think that our, we still have our partners with Project Homeless Connect. The uh, Sunrise Church is doing amazing things in the community to help folks um, as well. Um, did, did you have another point or something? I saw you unmute Mayor Calloway. No. You know, I, I was just, um, you, you, you mentioned one of the things I was going to say, Representative, you know, um, the, the RV camping site that the county was running at the, at the um, you know, fairgrounds as well <clears throat> as the uh, tent community, um, you know, both of those were funded with CARES dollars uh, from the federal government that had to be, and so that finished up uh, at the end of December. And, um, and so, you know, what we did with, uh, by opening tomorrow, the, um, you know, the civic center shelter, you know, for lack of a better term, was just, you know, again, trying to fill in a gap, um, recognizing that it's, it, it, that it, you know, it won't solve the problem for everybody, but it does help solve the problem for 30 individuals. You know, during the summer, we partnered with Salvation Army and Homeless Connect, and the, the, the site that is now a retail store again over by Bymart, you know, was a, a 24 hours a day, you know, um, sleeping, whether, you know, you could escape the heat or the rain, have showers, meals, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, part of the problem is these are all short term solutions. You know, even the downtown shelter is only um, going to be open through March 15th when by permit, all of these things, you know, the, the, the you know, the cold weather shelters close. So sometimes it feels like a bit of a whack-a-mole, you know, as you're trying to come up with solutions. Um, and, you know, one of the things I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, you know, how can we help? And, you know, is it, you know, do we go by, you know, the, the, the big camp encampment on the West end of town and, and provide supplies. And I said, you know, really work through homeless uh, project, homeless connect work through community action because they are providing a coordinated um, effort, a coordinated uh, you know, service. And if a bunch of people are going by with food or blankets or whatnot, you know, that's great, but it's right there at the moment and it doesn't provide, you know, a longevity of, of, of support and service. And, um, and sometimes it helps, you know, just contributes to the mess and that sort of thing. There is, um, you know, a, a, a criminal element in, in some of the camps with drug use and drug sales and, and things such as that. And these are individuals who are not wishing to go into you know, the, the, the shelters, um, or, you know, like our shelter downtown, it, it's not going to uh, accommodate animals. So if you have a dog with you, you know, um, and you're not willing to, uh, understandably, um, you know, separate from your, your pet, then, then it isn't going to be a good site. Uh, you know, so it, it's, um, you know, it, you know, we're, we're trying to be creative with the resources we have. We're trying to make sure, you know, that people aren't, um, less, you know, frankly, homeless and hopeless. Um, you know, we're working on a new, um, and I apologize, Representative, feel free to, you know, to, to stop me. Um, no, it's fine. You know, but we're looking at, um, you know, an ordinance which would allow organizations, for instance, churches to allow RV, you know, camping, you know, a couple, if you will, maybe up to three, but then you'd have to provide, um, you know, sanitary services and, you know, making sure that, you uh, uh, and, and there's some other stipulations so that when people move, you know, move in or locate there, that it wouldn't just, um, you know, become, um, you know, pro uh, you know, creating a, a new set of problems, you know, by trying to provide a solution. So, you know, we're really trying to work with those who are, are wishing to step up and we're encouraging those who are able to help in other ways to work through our community partners. Um, and, you know, so um, thank you for giving me this space to, to, to kind of hijack your, um, you did. Your, your forum, your town it hall. Is a, it is a community conversation. This isn't the Janine hour. I really don't intend it to ever be that way. 
Y'all know I can talk. <laughs> I might even break out in song, but it really is truly an opportunity. And I really hope that when we open up and have office hours, that people are really feeling com comfortable to drop in and just for a bit to, to talk about some of these issues. So um, I thank Mayor Callaway for, for jumping in there um, very much because uh, the coordinated effort is incredibly important. Um, I, I know that even someone through next door, um, well, one of my neighbors was collecting items for the um, Western Farm Workers Association um, because those, um, uh, you know, she was collecting supplies and, and saying, if you give it to me, I have a means to take it and, and get it to them. And so, um, I think it's really heartwarming when people in the community are figuring out that, you know, we're all human beings and we're hurting through this pandemic and we have to figure out how we um, lift each other up and help each other out uh, during all this. I, I see uh, it does take a village and I see several village people around this uh, virtual circle that I know are doing the, the, the work, um, whether, uh, yeah, Mark's breaking out into a YMCA. Um, and so, I mean, even on, even on Are site, we end with singing YMCA? I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, even, even some other folks have, you know, there's like buy nothing sites on Facebook. And I know that I, you know, I know, uh, you know, folks that are collecting food that they see on there and saying, Hey, if you don't have a means for it, let me know. And I'll take it uh, to the, to the local school pantry. Donna's family. I know that you're doing that. And so, like I said, it takes a village and I just appreciate all of you in, uh, you know, stepping up and doing these things. It's not that you have to do everything, but just think about doing one thing to lift somebody else up, lift, uh, help someone, um, give a call to a senior, um, you know, um, we will certainly share those collection opportunities. We'll perhaps we'll put that in our next newsletter as well, that those are a great, good idea. Thank you so much. Um, but um, I know that, that I wanted to say that senior isolation is a real thing. I'm a Meals on Wheels volunteer that has been calling weekly to the same group of seniors, touching base with them. Senior isolation is real. So anybody that you know that you can reach out to to give a hello to, um, I think would be meaningful. Um, I want to be super respectful of your time. I want to be super respectful of Mark and Nicole as uh, time too, because it's been a heck of a week and they need to go and re-energize and recharge because I'm sorry, folks, Monday will come again. So um, I, I thank you so much for following along. Um, if you're not part of the newsletter, if you haven't received our newsletter, please, um, you know, drop it in chat, drop us your email to, you can privately drop that to us, to myself or Mark, um, and um, we'll continue to um, reach out as much as possible because we're all in this together and we're going to get through it. So be good to yourself, uh, be good to each other, and thank you so much for joining today.